My name is Jane Lillian Vance, and I'm here with my friend Jill Harrington to talk about the painting I finished in 2011 called The Hunted. On October 17, 2009, my beloved student from Virginia Tech, Morgan Dana Harrington, went missing after she attended a concert in Charlottesville. A hundred and one days later, a farmer checking his fence lines in a remote pasture, miles from where Morgan was last seen, found her skeletonized remains. For that long three months, Morgan's mama Jill and daddy Dan and brother Alex had suffered not knowing. And in that time, because I loved Morgan and she was my student in the creative process, my front row girl, I had spoken to investigators and asked, what can I do? And the investigators had given me the advice that I should continue to write her. And I did. I wrote her relentlessly, trying to find Morgan. And I remember the moment when I was driving to teach another class that winter, that January 26, 2010. And the news on public radio said that the Harringtons were being driven in a car, a state police car, to the likely discovery of their daughter's remains. And I remember I hit my knees. And so only after that time did I come to know her parents. She was my student. I did not know Dan and Jill Harrington. But I know them now. And I asked permission as the second anniversary of her murder approached, the first having been remembered with great ceremony. When the second anniversary came, I could not bear that from now on it was just time, it was just the rest of time, and that there would be receding memory. No, there would not be. So I thought, I woke up one morning with the idea of this painting completely formed. I could see the painting. And to be completely honest, I was almost mortified to ask permission to do this painting. It seemed somehow forward or egoistical or something. Could I really be asking to do this? It, it's so intimate. But you know what? I did ask. And Jill Harrington said, yes, it's right. Do it. And be sure when you do it that it is a natural place of life because thank God Morgan's remains, if there is some blessing, were not on asphalt or on rock. They were in a pasture. At the very least, this pasture cradled her. I have taken comfort from this idea, thinking that Morgan's long golden hairs fit into the bird nests of the surrounding woods, that Morgan became the field. There is in some small way for me comfort in that idea. And she said to Jill Harrington said also, be sure though that it is a sharp place because this is where her murderer dropped her that night, never to be found, but we found Morgan. And so this place is a beautiful place of life and it is a sharp place. And in my waking vision of the hunted, there was this startled, teary-eyed, glisten-eyed doe. And in my imagination, this doe had been there two years before, had been there in the night, and with an animal's seeing and an animal's heart, had heard this coarse man drop our girl on this ground. And this doe knew that something was unnatural and horrible. Now it's two years later and the same doe in passing and looking for apples in late October and finding the last blackberries has come to this spot. And this doe remembers that night two years before. She remembers and she looks toward who is now the hunted. In front of the doe, there is a spider web. I'm thinking of the science project Morgan did on the tensile strength of 
spider web in the cold and the hot. And yet the spider is a predator. And on her face, as in almost all of my paintings now, there is the 241, 241. The last words Ma Morgan said to her mama, I love you too much forever and once more. 241, mama. There is the thistle with its angular points. There are the bees, and though they make honey, they bring stings as well. It is a sharp place, see the barbed wire. But sharpest of all comes from the fact, and I'm going to ask Morgan's mama to talk about this part of the bracelet and the earrings. Let me say first that Morgan's mama not only gave permission for this painting and encouraged it, and it has already begun to have a, a life that I think has uh, just begun, really. It's been part of a great show in New Rochelle at Castle Gallery, curated by Jennifer Zazzo, about memory and loss and home. Um, but Morgan's mama also gave me permission to use Morgan's cremains in this work. I have never done such a thing in all my years of painting. There I was in my painting room at two in the morning, and I live in a quiet rural place. And there I took out packets of my student's ashes, of her cremated flesh, and of her cremated bones. They were different colors. One was iron red, and one was the gray of calcium. And you know, with my clear oil paint, like clear transparent toothpaste, mixing in Morgan's cremains, I thought of all the old civil rights crosses in the 60s that said, get right with God. And I thought, I had better be right to do this work. This is no light job. This is no easy work. And I was right. I was in the right frame of heart and spirit to honor my student and to honor her parents and to honor the work that Help Save the Next Girl and VT Help Save the Next Girl do, which is to wake us all up to our beauty and to the danger that may be nearby. So I painted with these cremains and you can see the sharp jag of bone fragment. I cannot hide that from you on the surface of this painting. This is not artificial or tender work. This is rough, primal, emotional stuff. And it is my honor to have done this work. Jill. I mean, the emotions that um, you see in the deer and in this all-knowing sweet dove here um, are similar to the emotions that we have felt. You know, we we felt that, you know, along with our daughter, that um, we had been hunted and our possibility of life and joy uh, and moving on was finished. But there is redemption and growth happens. I mean, that's, uh, nature um, has cycles. We are finding through things like the beauty that's depicted here and the goodness that this painting has done and the love and friendship of our ever increasing extended family um, that you can wrestle even from something as hideous as the murder of your beloved child, there is goodness to be had, even from that position. Think what you can do from anything less than that. I find a lot of comfort in what we've been able to do. I'm so thankful for the opportunity that we've had and all the love that we have received. Especially thank you so much, Jane. Jill, um, thank you so much for encouraging this work. It was, as the Tibetans say, heart work. It was definitely heart work. Um, I'm looking at how so many people, when they first see this painting, see it as a bucolic, rural, peaceful place of just beauty. And then they notice 
the bracelet and the earrings. Yes. These were um, jewelry that Morgan, like a lot of young girls now, she would wear rubber bands, gold and silver, whatever, and made it all work beautifully. But these were earrings that were mine when I was a young girl, as well as this heavy silver um, Bedouin bracelet. And Morgan was wearing it when she was killed. Um, these are two pieces that uh, were returned to me by the police. And um, you can be sure that um, this is never far from my arm. It's my honor to wear it, my obligation to wear it, because I have seen Morgan's um, blackened, um, decaying arm in this field, in this bracelet. Who would have ever thought that those would be the images that a parent has? They are slowly being eroded, those grotesque images, by some of this beauty. Thank you, Jill. For me, as the painter, the thought of these, you know, ornaments keeping vigil with her under so many moons and stars and snows and rains and falling leaves, this is a potent, potent place for me. And I have to tell you one more story. And it, it, it awakens in me um, a kind of fierce compassion. The Buddhists call it prajnaparamita, wisdom and compassion together that is very fierce and that will find a path like water or fire or air or mind will find a path. When I held those very earrings which Jill lent to me while I was making this painting, I was there under the halogen spots in my studio and I saw the glint on that beautiful gold and I suddenly saw unexpectedly my reflection. And then I thought, so these earrings have held the murderer's reflection. And in the quiet of my painting room, I cannot tell you with what sure commitment I painted, not just painted, but gave my heart to this idea of recovering and recuperating goodness for Morgan, for her parents, and for help save the next girl. Thank you, Jill. Two, four, one.